Belle. I know we've all kind of been going a little bit crazy lately, right, Belle? And we're all dealing with the same thing, the coronavirus, AKA COVID-19, but I think Cardi B said it best. Coronavirus! Coronavirus! There are things just constantly reminding us that we are in the middle of a pandemic. And I get it. It's hard not to feel like we're living a real life episode of the Black Mirror. And it's been hard on all of us. Some of us are out of work. Others are stuck at home. Some are sick and suffering from this disease. Others are out on the front lines, especially our doctors and our nurses and our healthcare workers. I'd like to take a moment to thank you all because you are truly the heroes and we all need to remember to support them, to not hoard supplies, to not start buying up all the gloves and masks and hand sanitizer and stuff that our healthcare workers need to protect themselves when they're treating people, when they're treating your family members and your loved ones who are suffering from the coronavirus. So if you're bored at home or if you just need a little bit of a distraction, something a little bit different than the basic news, I wanted to give you a behind the scenes look at what it's like for us journalists who are working through this. Obviously, our jobs have not slowed down. If anything, we're actually busier now. So I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a behind the scenes look at how it all works for us, what we're doing and how we're handling it because it's very tough emotionally on journalists as well, especially when you're covering the coronavirus day in and day out, day after day, watching every single press conference and interviewing doctors and all these different people constantly and constantly just taking in all this information. It's like a complete information overload. It's just a lot to deal with and it can also give us anxiety and stress as well. But we wanna get that information out to you guys because that is critical and we know how important it is to keep everyone in the community, in the public updated about what is going on with the coronavirus. And we will get through this and we'll get through it together by being kind to each other, by looking out for the most vulnerable in our communities by making sure we social distance, by making sure we wash our hands, and also by remembering that the best medicine in life is laughter. At the end of a long night of Rona, you get your cookie. Around the clock, the you might notice that I'm standing in my apartment right now. Normally I would be at the station, I would be sitting in our conference room and we'd be having a meeting, um, but things are a little bit different now. Our uh, managers are really trying to make sure that we all stay safe and none of us get sick. So they are limiting the amount of people in the newsroom. So for us reporters, um, we pretty much call in on a conference call every day. Um, my meeting starts at 3.30 because I work at the night shift. So we call in and we discuss our story ideas with the other reporters and producers and managers. And then we make our plan. And then whoever we're working with today will pick us up. So today I think I'm working with um, Mike Brown, one of our photographers, so he's gonna pick me up here at my apartment. And we're gonna go out and we're gonna shoot whatever video we need, do whatever interviews we need to do, go live tonight at 10 and 11 if we need to do that. And we're gonna put our story together out in the field. Um, we are trying to limit as much as we can face-to-face -face interviews just for safety reasons. Of course, there's sometimes where it can't be avoided, so we are still doing those. And in that case, we just kind of make sure there's a healthy amount of space between ourselves and our interview subject. But we're also doing a lot of FaceTime interviews to try to cut back and practice that social distancing we keep telling you about. Welcome to the conference center. Please enter your passcode followed by the pound sign. Maybe we go after that, Chris, as your package and we do the butcher shop thing as a VLB. Kelly's doing the pigeons, and I'm doing the meat. Is that what I get? Sounds good, guys. If you right. have any questions, just give us a holler. Okay. We'll uh, just do the best we can. Alrighty. Talk to you later. All right. I'll text you my number, Chris, and Kelly, I'll call Mike. Okay. Thank you. I know some people can work from home. Some people can't, and some people lost their jobs, especially with the recent shutdowns of bars, restaurants movie theaters, bowling alleys, and gyms. A lot of people are facing some very tough times financially. So this is why people are asking the governor to provide some kind of relief. I found this petition online. It says, tell Governor Mike DeWine to freeze rent, mortgage, and bill payments during crisis. And this woman named Emerald Wolf Lord started this petition. And look at this. It has nearly 70,000 signatures with a goal of 75,000. The woman who started this petition tells me she has two small children 
and she's just worried about where she's going to go next, how she's going to get through, how she's gonna pay her bills. Like so many other Americans and people across the world right now, you know, we have this virus, this pandemic, no one could have ever planned for. So how do you plan for something like this? How do you deal with it financially? So that is what we're going to be talking about today. We're gonna to be talking with people affected. We'll talk with the woman. Um, she's not local, she's actually far away. So I think we're just gonna do a phone interview with her, but we'll talk with her about why she decided to start this petition what her goal is, and we'll also talk with some other um, local business owners and maybe some just people who are affected, service industry workers, etc. Once my photographer picks me up, I will need to bring this stuff with me. The cat will stay at home, although she's on my laptop bag right now. Belle, you can't come. You have to stay at home, okay? <laughs> you're under permanent quarantine because you're a house cat. Right? So I wanna know, you guys can tell me in the comments, what has been the most difficult thing for you with this whole coronavirus pandemic? How has it affected your life? What has it changed? Has it canceled important plans for you? Um, are you anxious? Just tell me kind of how you're feeling because I know it's affected all of us on different scales in different ways and I'd like to hear how it impacted you personally and impacted your family. So one thing I wanna emphasize uh, throughout this coverage and this behind the scenes look is that we do not want you guys to panic. We've seen a lot of that across the world. Uh, the people who are buying the stories out of all the toilet paper and pushing people out of the way. That is the last thing we need in a time like this. Uh, the key things to remember, wash your hands, be kind, and go out of your way to help the most vulnerable people in our community. I mean, think about how much this affects you know, the elderly people and people with pre-existing conditions, think about how afraid they are. If you're afraid and you're healthy, pretty much, think about how they're feeling. Um, we need to pretty much go out of our way to be better people during a pandemic and during a time of a crisis like this. I mean, that's what being a human is all about, is helping out your fellow human. And personally, if you can go to the grocery store and you can help out that elderly neighbor or someone like that, do it. I mean, it's such a small thing to do to help someone and it goes a long way. I wonder how Mike Brown is gonna feel about this little vlog I'm doing. Oh, he just texted me. He's here. All right, it looks like Mike found me. What do you think? Hey Mike, how's the pandemic treating you today? How's the pandemic treating you? You've had worse pandemics? <laughs> I don't think he could hear me. This is Mike Brown, Howdy. the famous Mike Brown. Um, so basically the story we're doing is this woman, she lives far away in Maryville. We're gonna do a phoner with her. Um, she started this pe petition to ask Governor DeWine to waive like rent and other bills uh, for people who are affected and out of work because of this. So we're gonna do a phoner with her. She's ready whenever. And then there's a guy who worked at Punchbowl Social, which is just around the corner over here. He's gonna come meet us outside Punchbowl Social in like an hour. He was laid off from there. And he says that they laid them all off permanently and told them they'd have to reapply to get their jobs back once this is over. So I also reached out to Punchbowl Social, um, their corporate, to get a statement. And that's pretty much it. And then we just need, I guess, video of like stuff that's closed and bars and whatever. So That's what I'm doing now. In your lifetime, have you ever seen everything closed like this? Nah. Nah, not like this. Have you ever had a story that we've covered this much in a row in your career? <laughs> Uh, only after the girls were found. Oh, we were on that for Ariel Castro. A long time. But yeah, yeah, so I, that was the biggest story. As far as something like this, no. What about 9/11? A lot of people said 9/11 was crazy. Okay, I'll give you that one too. That was a long time ago, but yeah, I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the flats. It's one of Cleveland's most popular places to go out to bars. There's some restaurants too, but. Pretty much everything is closed because of Governor DeWine's order. Um, it closed all bars and restaurants. Restaurants can do delivery and takeout, that's it. So, as you can imagine, this area is pretty much dead. And Mike says he remembers it being like this 15 years ago, but that was when there was no bars here, right? Yep. Yeah, this is pretty bad back then. Now we're in the 19 News live truck. This is what Mike drives pretty much full time. I don't know how you drive this thing, it's like a boat. That's the piano bar. 
That's shut down. This is punch bowl. It's huge. It goes all the way around. Awesome. Ready? Not a FaceTime or anything, right? Just no, a phone. just a phone or... Hello? Hey, Emerald. This is Kelly Kennedy with 19 News. How are you? Hi. And so, obviously, this is something that none of us could have prepared for, a pandemic. I mean, we have a lot of restaurants, bars closed, um, gyms closed, you know, businesses all across the state shut down. So, a lot of people uh, potentially not sure how they're going to pay their bills. Um, why do you think that, you know, the governor needs to provide some kind of relief? I feel like if the government is going to step in and, you know, shut down places for the safety of everyone, that they should also be making sure that, you know, people who are losing their jobs over this remain safe as well. Um, there needs to be some kind of safety net because a lot of these places have been, uh, you know, low wage or minimum wage places that are, you know, <laughs> going out of uh, business temporarily and not a lot of those people can save money for prices like this. So we did one interview, got some coffee, now what? Our next interview is uh, in 40 minutes. Should we go back to the flats or should we just sit here? Should I transcribe that other interview? I was going to say, I could set things up in here. All right, we're going to meet our last interviewee. Well, our only interviewee in person. We're trying to do less in-person interviews because of Corona. But we're interviewing this guy who worked at Punchbowl Social, which we are approaching right now. And he says that they laid off all of their employees permanently and told them they'd have to reapply for their jobs once the coronavirus is over. Now I reached out for them uh, to Punchbowl Social to get a statement. I asked them if this was true, if they had actually laid them all off and told them they had to reapply for their jobs and they didn't really answer my question. Um, instead they just told me that this had really impacted the restaurant industry and they would be reopening. So I'm gonna try to see if I could get an actual answer. But this guy should be here in a few minutes. Let's see. He texted me on my other phone. Where? I'm sure he'd come up to us. I told him to look for us on the 19 truck. We're here. Oh, you're wearing your green for St. Patrick's Day? Absolutely. Are you Irish? Yes. Me too. Mostly. I had mutt the rest of it. So. I'm a lot of things, but my mom called me and was like, I know it doesn't feel like St. Patrick's Day, but don't forget where you come from. I'm like, okay, thanks, Mom. I'll wear green, don't worry. She's like, I'm gonna check, you better be wearing green on air. I totally forgot what day it was until I was watching TV. I forgot until my mom said it. It's the St. Patrick's Day, isn't it? It doesn't feel like it. As soon as I smelled my wife's corned beef, I'm like, oh, wait. Oh, at least you still get corned beef. Yeah, that's how I get home. Why didn't you eat it for lunch? Wasn't ready We're still yet? still cooking. Oh. Hey guys, I am now here in the back of the live truck and I am transcribing my interview so that I can write my story and then Mike will edit it back here on our laptop. Like I said, we're working remotely so we don't go into the station and we stay away from as many people as possible. I've got my gray hand sanitizer right here. We have been keeping these on us. So the company gave them to us. That way we can just make sure we keep, you know, after I touch the computer, I'll use this and wipe down all the surfaces and everything like that. I also have some wipes up there that I'll use to wipe down the computer and everything. So right now, it is time to transcribe my sound bites. 
so I transcribe my sound bites on my phone just because it's easier to type in my notes. And then I just kind of put them in order and then I write my story after I'm done. Do you think we'll cover the coronavirus? <laughs> Let, let's make a bet. <laughs> Down there, I guess. Oh, there's still traffic. No, we can. We could. Oh. Well, we can just still stand on that corner, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm. It's cold out, so you need your hat, your 19 news hat. You need your IFB, goes in your ear, plugs into your phone, so you can hear the show and the producer. Give a mic check, please. Um, mic check one, two, three, four. Mic check one, two, three, four. This is a tough time for a lot of people, especially those in the service industry. So we're doing our live shot out here in the flats and there is not a soul out here. It is a ghost town. And not only is this one of the most popular nightlife destinations in Cleveland, it's also St. Patrick's Day today. And there is not a single soul on the street. All these bars and restaurants completely shut down. It's like a ghost town. It's so weird. My photographer, um, I've never been here for St. Patrick's Day before, but my photographer says, normally you wouldn't even be able to walk down the street. It would be so filled with people. And look, there's no one. No one. What up? Hmm? Wasn't such a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> I've had worse. Oh yeah. Well, that's a wrap for coronavirus coverage day. Twelve. I never thought I'd be in the flats on St. Patrick's Day and enjoy it. It's empty. There's nobody here. Yep. That's what I like about it. Man, I wish I could have seen the craziness. I would have enjoyed the party. You will have to stay here until next year. All right. All right, it's been real. That's for sure. Enjoy your wife's corned beef. The full impact of the economic fallout of the pandemic probably won't be felt for weeks, perhaps even months. Well, still many people are already out of jobs trying to figure out how they'll pay their bills. Yeah, Kelly Kennedy continuing our coverage. Kelly, you spoke to some of those people, correct? Yes, I did. And these are tough times, especially for people in the service industry. Now, I'm standing here in the flats. Not only is this a hot spot, it's also St. Patrick's Day. This street should be packed. These bars should be crowded full of people. But I am the only one out here, just me and my photographer. No one's out here. It is a ghost town. Now, I spoke with a man who bartended at Punchbowl Social, and he is one of nearly 80,000 people to sign this petition asking the governor for help. About 24 hours ago, Emerald Wolford started this petition, urging Governor DeWine to freeze rent, mortgage, and bill payments during the pandemic. I feel like if the government is going to step in and shut down places for the safety of everyone, that they should also be making sure that people who are losing their jobs over this remain safe as well. Wolford is a stay-at-home mom, and her husband works at a tobacco shop in Marysville. 
While he's still open for now, she knows that could change. I'm really concerned that by the time he gets his check that I'm not going to be able to have any supplies, that we might be quarantined by then. She made the petition Monday morning, and by Tuesday afternoon, it had more than 75,000 signatures. I could just refresh it and watch it grow. It was crazy. Ricky Blazy worked as a bartender at Punchbowl Social in the Flats. He says 24 hours after closing, employees were told they were permanently laid off. And if they wanted to work there after this was all over, they'd have to reapply for their jobs. It's definitely a slap in the face, and we have to now seek out other employment, which isn't really easy right now considering everything's shut down. Governor DeWine did expand the state's unemployment insurance system to cover workers who are displaced even temporarily by the coronavirus. But Blazy says bartenders won't get much from unemployment, and he has a four-year-old child to support. If no one's got jobs, no one's got any money coming in, how are we going to pay our bills? You know, and that affects everybody. I reached out to Punchbowl Social for a comment. They sent me a statement. It reads in part, while we know we will rebound, we don't know when that will be, and so cannot make promises about future employment. Now, if you live in Cleveland and you're trying to figure out which bills you can afford to pay this month, don't worry about utilities. The mayor has ordered Cleveland Water and Power not to turn that off during this crisis. Reporting live in the flats, Kelly Kennedy, 19 News.